Hi everyone, welcome back to the Get A Breed channel. So today we're going to look at two things. One, creating a clone recipe, how to do that. And two, uh, a beginner's all grain brew batch. So Kuhn is a graphic designer here at Get A Brewed and he has brewed before but has never taken on an all grain brew on his own. So beginner friendly all grain brewing with Kuhn. I have used this book, uh, Brewing Classic Beer Styles, incredible book um, for getting recipes. What we're wanting to do today is uh, Pliny the Elder clone, and I remember reading this book before and seeing that there's a, a recipe called the Hop Hammer, and it chats about Vinnie Clarusso of uh, Russian River Brewing Company, brewing one of the best styles um, of a double IPA, and he shared his recipe with the brewing community, Pliny the Elder. Now, if you haven't heard of this beer, it's iconic. It's probably um, the standard for which a double IPA was created from. Great quality beer. And what we've done is we've used the recipe builder at Get A Brew to create the recipe. So if you're wanting to clone a recipe, a good place to start is a Google search, uh, a homebrew forum, a book, whatever it may be. So you'll, if we take this one, for example, so the recipe here, it's given us the original gravity, the final gravity, um, alcohol, ABV, and then it gives you, in this book, it gives you the extract option as well as the all grain. So all I've done really is I've went to the all grain section. We can see that it's 6.91 kilos of two row. That's just a base pale ale, 227 grams of wheat, and then 227 grams of crystal. So we're gonna mash this at 66 degrees for 90 minutes. You can see there's an extensive hop selection. So if you find a recipe and for example there's a, a hop that you're not familiar with or you can't source it and get a brewed website, check out our hop substitution chart. So for example we don't stock Warrior anymore but we're, we chose to change that to Columbus. So we've Columbus, Chinook, Simcoe, Centennial uh, layered at multiple stages all throughout this brew. We're going to brew with um, BRY97 which is a really clean US ale yeast. You could use US05 uh, y yeast 1056 or white lab 001 all very similar so when you've got the recipe in the book and there's maybe some little uh, ingredients that you're unsure of just check a substitution chart there will always be something there that's suitable to be subbed in or subbed out to create the recipe that you want to create we have pre-made recipes in the get a brew beer kit section and they're designed with instructions which are easy to follow but if there's a particular style that you're wanting to replicate you're going to want to use the custom grain kit go onto the website just click into the custom grain kit section you do need to log in to save the recipe as in log in create an account so get your account created if you haven't already got one with us if you do get logged in use your password and then it'll take you step by step through how to create that recipe so you'll go through each section so there'll be base malts crystals kilned, even you know, smoked and adjuncts, all sorts of different sections. Select the malt that you want, select the quantity. If there's a section that you don't want, click the little no thanks at the bottom corner, skip onto that. And select the hops that you want to select, select the yeast that you want to select. These recipe kits, the all grain brewing kits that we create on the recipe builder are prepared fresh for use. The order comes into the guys in the warehouse, they prepare fresh, it's dispatched, same day or next day at latest and it arrives with you express and it arrives something like this so it comes out of the box you'll have the the grain bag you'll have your yeast if you've ordered extras like uh, dextrose or candy cane sugar you'll have it or botanicals or anything like that so we've got our our grist bill we've got our dextrose we've got our hops you can see here that the guys have put the minute addition times the hop variety um, the fact that it's you know it's an IPA clone, you can put the name that you want on the recipe, so that will be the name of whatever you've named it. Um, you can see in this particular kit, there's a, an enormous amount of hops. So we've we've got our water heating in the Brewmonk system today. We're using the Brewmonk 30 liter. We have the uh, sparge water heater on the left and the conical fermenter on the right. Today, what we're going to do is. Um, pass over to Kuhn to run the brew and hopefully he'll enjoy his first experience brewing a, an all grain brew batch here at Getter Brewed. Kuhn, keeping it really simple, we've got roughly, it's slightly over seven kilograms of malt and we've got the dextrose obviously, so mashing in strike water, 
rule of thumb, kind of three times the volume. Okay. So if we have seven kilos, I'm rounding it to seven just to keep the mass simple. So three sevens is 21. So we'll have 21 litres of strike water in here, okay. heated up to 66 degrees, which is our mashing in temperature. We'll mash in, um, there's an absorption rate on that malt, so rule of thumb figures, one kilo will lose one litre. So there's set three sevens is 21. 21 litres going in, <laughs> yeah. we lose seven automatically, okay. drops us down to 14. So we're going to want the sparge to at least 28 and a half litres pre-boil okay. volume to allow for a boil off. We're going for 25 litre batch size, I'll add that in just to keep things <laughs> um, simple. So mashing in in 21 litres, Sparging with, so if you take your seven off at 14, you want 28 and a half, you're going to sparge with 14 and a half. <laughs> okay. So 14 and a half litres of sparge water okay. in here. All right. like we, we've, we've done a video on calculating your mass and sparge volumes before. It's on the channel here if you want to check it out. It's going to differ from system to system, but these brew monks boil off rates fairly consistent. Dead space is fairly consistent, and we know that we'll end up with 25 litres of Pliny the Elder clone going into the fermenter and then subsequently into the ferminator so one thing once you get your grain in is get it recirculating so you'll have the, the yeah the grain basket get the pump recirculating so that you're getting good extract out of okay. the grains that's that and then hit start so that's it starting so that can be dropped in so now all you want to do is um, mash in and give the grains a good mix so that you've no dough balls Grains seem to float as you doing this, making sure there's no dough balls. All right, so we've set this for boil, um, and pretty much what we're going to do now is just get the grains out and then get ready for sparging. There's a second little filter over here. We're going to just leave this in for sparging. This just helps uh, dissipate the water while you're doing the sparging. Okay, so we're just going to check the sparge water temperature. All right, we've checked the temperature of the sparge water. It's about 75. We're going to start sparging now. I'm just going to pour this around nicely. We have people asking us about the math on how much sparge water to actually put in there. Okay, so it's pretty simple. All we're doing is bringing the water up to a pre-boil volume of 29 liters. So obviously, yeah, that number is going to vary um, depending on how much uh, water is left after you've done your uh, mashing. We want to get uh, about 25 liters um, into the fermenter. So we're accounting for four liters of boil off. Okay, so we've put in about 10 liters. So we're just waiting for that to drain off. If, if you're following recipes, you're following instructions, I know exactly what I'm needing to do. Um, I've watched all the, the videos with Johnny um, and I kind of know what I'm doing. Um, he has helped out with the small things that I'm not fully, um, I fully don't know. Yeah, once you know the system, you know what you're doing, you know exactly when all your uh, additions are going in. It seems relatively easy. <laughs> Um, I think it's probably less stressful without him being here because I know I'm making mistakes and I know I'm making more notes for my Q&A jargon right now on all the terminology and stuff. But in all honesty, as long as there's beer coming into a bottle, I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, we, we're getting close to the boil. We're just going to remove the grain basket. Um, just be a bit careful, it is going to be warm. So I'm just going to put the handle in. <sighs> Get a little jiggle for luck. Um, it's at a pre-boil volume at, of 29 liters. Um, we're just gonna put the lid on just to get the temperature up. So we're just waiting for it to reach uh, the boiling temperature of 100 degrees. Once it's actually reached that temperature, we will remove the lid. Um, that will release the DMS. Is that correct? Yeah. Run, run the run DMS. We're gonna have the run DMS coming off. Cool. Diamethic sulfate. So we're going to get that diamethic sulfate right out of here. 
<laughs> apparently, from what I've heard, um, just with people, is that uh, the DMS gives your beer a cardboard-like taste. Okay. If you don't uh, get that out of there. <laughs> our 90 minute boil has started. We've got to put in our 90 minute additions, um, which is uh, Columbus and Chinook. Throughout the boil, just monitor everything. You've got to remember to do all your hop additions. Um, what we have here is at, our, at 45 minutes, and now this is counting from 90 minutes down to zero. Um, so we've got uh, Simcoe going in at 45 minutes, Columbus going in at 30 minutes. Then at our zero minutes, that's when the boil's finished. 64 gram Centennial and 28 gram Simcoe. And then we've got some dry hops, which is gonna be 92 Columbus, 50 gram Centennial and 50 gram Simcoe. The 10 minute addition is Dextrose, which is a corn-based sugar, um, brewing sugar, um, highly fermentable. So. Um, this will be added in at 10 minutes before the end of the boil. This is a 8.9% uh, ABV double RPA, so it's going to have a bit of kick. This is just going to help our gravity reading get to where it needs to be. couple of minutes to the end of boil we've just put the chiller in um, that just helps sterilize the the chiller itself plus minus five minutes we're gonna do the last little bit of hop addition hook up the chiller so, um, just to get the crash cooling starting and boil is finished we've added our last little bit of hops we're just gonna get the cooling happening that's being done with the wort chiller should help get the wort nice and cool very quickly simple case of just adding in your hoses switching on cold water and let the, yep, you can do it. So yeah, we're gonna just get this uh, cooled down to 90 degrees. Um, as soon as it's done, transfer the, uh, transfer the wort into the fermenter. Okay, so we just put the fermentation vessel um, into the ferminator. The ferminator is just gonna allow us to control the, uh, control the temperature a little bit better. We do have a temperature gauge on our vessel, but what we're gonna actually do, the ferminator comes with a little probe. We're gonna use this probe just to be able to monitor the temperature a little bit easier. Spray down the yeast packet, spray down whatever you're using to cut this little packet open. This on top of the wart. Okay, just spray down everything, just make sure you can get that, uh, get everything sanitized, the lid on. So there you go, that is how to use our all grain kit, um, all grain recipe builder. You can get your recipes online, you can get it from a book, any clone recipe you want to make up, put in the ingredients, our guys will pack it up for you, ship it out to you. Simple as that. Uh, my very first all grain brew and I'm quite happy on how it all went. Um, relatively easy. Um, using these sort of kits, um, these sort of, this sort of equipment does make it a lot easier. We'll be back in after primary fermentation just to do the dry hopping but yeah can't wait until it actually gets into a bottle and I get to Try it out. If you have any questions, um, get in contact. Thanks guys for watching. Happy brewing.